You know, technically, what I do, it's called a job. It's not. It's a big lie. I get paid to do the thing that I absolutely love, coming to events like the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion each year. This is what charges my battery. This is what replenishes my soul to finish out the racing season. Let's take a walk through the Le Mans Centenary exhibition. I'll do some individual car features here, uh, little tech tours maybe, if I can get some of them to take the bodywork off. But otherwise, let's just go for a walk through, I don't know, one, two hundred million dollars worth of amazing Le Mans related vehicles. 1968 Ford GT. Not a reproduction, not a, I don't know what, real thing, real, real thing. Ah, oh, unbelievable. 1961 Porsche 356 Abarth Carrera GTL. You know, instead of just going straight down the line, let's wander over. I understand that this 1975 Alpine A441 III actually had some travel issues. A uh, little bit of damage done. Yep, and you can see they've had to use a little bit of matching blue duct tape all this got beaten up traveling over from europe this thing is as loud as can be snarling but a class winner pretty awesome i would say right here look at the aerial look at the radio there a little antenna going on that's some cb radio type stuff back to this gorgeous porsche all the louvering and combined exhaust come over to 1929 Bentley lovingly referred to as old number one look at that the early morning Sun here overall winner right 1929 1930 at the 24 hours of Le Mans just oh my goodness this is the kind of stuff we have here 1931 Alfa Romeo 8c 2300 long chassis Oh, gorgeous just gorgeous right next to it a Delahaye from 1938 overall winner in 1938 at the 24 hours of Le Mans I appreciate that we're not talking about some perfectly restored vehicle you can see its age is still shown lots of patches of paint and you name it that's what I dig though uh, I mean, some cars, some vintage machines being restored to 100-point perfection, that's great. I prefer a little bit of uh, a little bit of life shown, a little bit of destruction maybe. Another Alpha here, 1962 Zagato Coda Tronca. Ran in 62 at Le Mans as well. This is a fun Porsche for sure seen this a couple times at the reunion not a ton or it might have been Ren Sport I should say uh, 1977 Porsche 935 first in class in 77 at the 24 hours of Le Mans Peter Gregg one of the drivers of this love the livery <laughs> right uh, all you need is put a driver in there to get that helmet sitting right in line with what the livery was meant to bring you. Let's wander over to a 1979 Porsche 935. BBS wheel fans, of course. I mean, that's just life right there. Whittington Brothers and Klaus Ludwig recently lost one of the Whittington Brothers in an airplane crash, unfortunately. Uh, a story that folks know plenty about uh, in terms of their funding for their motor racing operations in the 1980s in particular. This is your overall winner from the 1979 24 Hours of Le Mans. I don't know what this is. It looks really cheap, kidding aside. One of the most valuable vehicles on the premise. Everything that's right about angles is right in front of you. Ferrari GTO. <sighs> and then, what I regard as one of the ugliest prototypes ever made. Uh, this just looks like something melted. And it's got 
one of the loudest and most annoying engine sounds you'll ever hear. Mazda 13B twin rotor from the side, not so bad at all. Uh, this would be class winner, 1984 Mazda Lola T616. Uh, <laughs> Look at that thing, just looks like a blob. Uh, but also, something that was pretty popular at this time in the early to mid 80s, bolting a front wing at the front of the car. Uh, just trying to make some extra downforce on this Mazda, Mazda, Mazda. Uh, uh, if you want to talk icons, you want to talk about vehicles that I love and many people love, factory Porsche 962. This is overall winner, 1986, 24 hours of Le Mans with three drivers, two who I have gotten to know fairly well in Derek Bell and Hans Stuck, Al Holbert, a hero of mine, lost unfortunately in a plane crash, 1988. Right here, look at this. This is some French Batmobile technology you see in front of you. Another Alpine. Look at this. The little subtle green stripe as well, right? Oh, I am loving, loving, loving this. 1964 M64, first in class in 1964. This brought to us by the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Oh my goodness. This is just well, something we've seen before. I've shown this to you before while doing uh, IMS Museum tours, but this 1964 250 LM, a gift to the Speedway Museum. Overall winner, 1965. Last overall winning Ferrari. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Then we even go to something that seems a little pedestrian, but indeed has a little bit of Le Mans provenance. 1994 uh, is when this car ran. This is a 1992 Porsche 968 Turbo RS. <sighs> so speaking of real Batmobiles, here we go. 1999 Panos LMP Roadster S. <sighs> Love this vehicle. Absolute, absolute crowd favorite whenever it ran. Placed seventh at Le Mans, by the way. This model here, this car here, 1999 Thunder. Red, white, and blue American Thunder right here. The 2003 Corvette C5R. Placed 12th overall with this collection of knuckleheads behind the wheel. Just America under the hood right there. Speaking of just amazing innovation, 1967 Chaparral J2. Monster, monster wing in the back. It's angle controlled by a pedal. Oh, this definitely needs a little bit of a uh, dedicated walkthrough here. Well, this is uh, courtesy of Ford family, Ford Museum. Uh, we'll come back to this later. This is the 1967 overall winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans, Ford GT40. My hero, Dan Gurney, also with AJ Foyt beneath the covers here. This 2005 Audi R8 LMP1, Travis Engen owns this. My friend Greg Martin Kiwi, who I worked with back in CART, the Hogan team. He's uh, one of the main folks who looks after this for Travis. Told me something like 55,000 kilometers of vintage racing that Travis has added to this R8 and its louvers for days. 2005 Panos Esperante GTLM. Sure, Miss Don. Team LNT. 
lovingly referred to as Team Lint. Uh, this vehicle, fun here with some additional signatures, Lawrence Tomlinson, Richard Dean, Tom Kimber Smith. Fun, a fun era for sure. One of the last truly fun GT eras where you had a idea, you could do something cool and bring it. About a 2008 Porsche RS Spider. This livery, having seen this run in this livery at Le Mans, beautiful car, truly, truly a beautiful car. Also happened to win its class in LMP2 in 2008. So much respect to this great sounding, great looking. I mean, this is classic, right? Just everything about the lines here, wonderful. Another, I honestly had just walking through here and reminiscing and being reminded how fortunate I've been in my career to do the stuff that I love, like see this car run, 2009 Porsche 911 GT3 RSR 997 special, not only Flying Lizard Motorsport, but the Troy Lee Custom Livery, right? All the winning drivers from Porsche over the year, their names, their flags, some of them have signed the car. Just such a special machine. This livery is just, loved it. Sister car done in the opposing colors. This primarily orange with blue. The other one primarily blue with orange. Just great. Another Flying Lizard machine, 2009 as well. This car here, finished sixth in class. Let's get to the end of the row here and then we'll wander back. 2010 Peugeot 908 HDI FAP. A brute, an absolute brutal machine. Also, <laughs> Fortunate again to have seen this run uh, come to life and then throughout its lifespan Just how low it is how aggressive it is just Mean as hell Performed that way as well placed fifth overall This vehicle and let's take a look at something assembled just for this event Panos family put this together, the original Delta Wing. Very fortunate back then to see this come together. Was under a NDA and got to go down and see this during its very first track test in 2012 at Button Willow. Tons of photos there I'm hoping to bring online sometime soon when I get a new photo site up. Been working on for a little bit, but you want to talk about innovation. 2012 Delta Wing, probably the most out of the box prototype or GT we've seen at Le Mans in many, many years. 2016 Ford GT class winner, our pals Joey Hand, Dirk Mueller, and Sebastian Bourdais. This is the hot rod. And let's do a little walk back to close. 1960 Porsche Abarth Carrera GTL, first in class, 10th overall. Not too far from being a bread van. 1959 Ferrari 250 long wheelbase competition. Third overall in 1959. How about a 1973 BMW 3.0, 3-liter CSL, first in the touring class at Le Mans in 1972. The iconic colors, I mean, come on, y'all. The BMW M colors, you really and truly aren't going to get much better than that. How about a 1958 Porsche 718 RSK? What is this worth? 11 trillion dollars probably i think that might be an accurate number overall winner the 1958 24 hours of le mans look at 
this. Sun just kissing it from behind. You can see, as I said a little bit earlier, its age. The little tonneau cover as well for the passenger side. Just, oh. You don't see these things very often. So when you do, there's a, a definite unicorn-esque element to it. About a 1958 Ferrari 250 TR. Famous gated Ferrari shifting system. Just from a lines standpoint, right? I don't know if things get much better than this beautiful, beautiful vehicle. How about another Porsche 1956 550A? All the Porsches in this era looked pretty darn similar, but I love it. There's a handmade look to this era of Porsche. And obviously they all were handmade, but some, like the Ferraris, didn't necessarily give that away. Take a look at most Porsches from this time and you can tell just tons of little imperfections. I actually prefer that though. I like to look at something like this, really a prototype, one of so few made, and know that, aha, real people pounding away, forming these panels, the overall chassis, Everything done here by a person doing their best while fully accepting perfection was just not an option. Uh, 1955 Jag <laughs> D-Type, yeah, you might be getting close to perfection if we're talking lines. Classic Akuri Akos colors, Scottish entrant, and this fin. Look at this, come on, y'all. I want to go to a 1952 Mercedes Type 194 overall winner. The 1952 24 Hours of Le Mans right here. And again, what is it worth? I don't know. I can't count that high. Look at this. My friend Ellen Byerly, directly responsible for getting these vehicles here beautifully worn leather as well oh. in a 1950 Porsche 356 2 with wheel covers right just another iconic Porsche development I am enraptured and in love that would have been first in class as well how do, we, uh, how do we describe this? Well, it has an adequate nickname, The Monster, Le Monstre. 1950 Cadillac, Briggs Cunningham, pure insanity. You wanna talk about hand-built? Oh, you can see the hand-builtness from 20 feet away. No question about that. 11th overall with Briggs Cunningham and Phil Walters in 1950. Right next to it, Cadillac Series 61, 10th overall in 1950, Petit Pateau. This, right? <laughs> the monster, super hand-built, hand-formed prototype version of a Cadillac. And then what do we have here right next to it? Oh, a damn real Cadillac. <laughs> Overstating the obvious, but this really and truly competed at the 24 hours of Le Mans as big and as just ginormous as it is finished 10th in 1950 and Allard as well from 1950 J2 these are so cute I love these how about a 1949 Aston Martin DB2 how do you keep the hood from flying open giant leather straps. 
I was mentioning earlier my friend Ellen, who's uh, helped put all this together. Congratulations to you, Ellen. You're amazing. And this is our tour here of the Heritage Display. Some of the cars not in here right now might be under their tent, uh, back with their owner. Might be getting ready to go out a little bit later, but nonetheless, look at this.